<laughs> you ready for a walk, Angel? It's been a minute, hasn't it? Been a long time. <laughs> Coming with us, Kitter Catter. Clea Queen. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so funny. My walks with the animals have been looking a little different lately. Our land has seen many changes of scene and color within the last few months, and I've tried to document them whenever I could get out there. Yeah. I guess Mr. C won't be joining us. We got these two babies. Some of y'all may have noticed that I've been quiet for some time now. This has been a season of deep transformation for us. And while the land is getting tucked in for the earth to sleep, I've been slowing down for the season as well. Unlike spring that blossoms to thrive, I have learned during this fall that autumn blossoms to die. The earth knows that she will have her day in the sun again, but not without taking the time to rest. For a long time, my programming told me I should constantly strive to be productive, but I have learned in this season that holiness can also be found in stillness. Even though my energy has been low lately, I have found ways to busy my hands while also allowing my body the time it needs to rest. And like the seeds that now lay dormant in the mother's belly, I too will blossom in the spring. Another season of deep transformation that is to come for Will and I. We are truly one with the seasons this year. Christmas just around the corner, I've got to get started on my homemade gifts. For the past couple of years now, this is how Will and I have been gift giving for the holidays. I am done with the commercialism of Christmas, and Will and I have been reevaluating how we want to celebrate this time of year for the years to come. I'll be making several tasty baked goods to give for Christmas again this year, but I wanted to add something new to our gift baskets. I had never made fruit leather before, but Will suggested it since we had so many persimmons this year. It's ridiculously easy to make, but it did require a lot of time for drying. I tested out several batches and my favorite was the spiced fruit leather with cinnamon and nutmeg. If you want to keep it simple, you could just add a little bit of lemon juice to give it a punch and call it a day. But I'll place these in the dehydrator for about 12 hours and then package them up with pretty bows and labels for the baskets. As autumn begins to blend with winter, we don't ever really get snow, but we do receive more rainy cold days. I know most people around these parts hate the rain and cold, but me, I'm not too fussed about it, especially when we have the wood stove roaring and vintage oldies playing in the other room. Most of the time, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than at home. And naturally, the season we're in beckons all to stay inside. Winter offers these quiet moments to me, and my mind is set on autopilot, left to ponder. I feel like Christmas has become this industrialized monster and people are lured away from why we celebrate in the first place. Our family's traditions for Christmas lie with the marking of Yule, which is the winter solstice, if you didn't know. Hey, 
For us, Yule brings out the most cherished moments with our people that we experienced all year. The beauty of Christmas does not stem from the gifts we give and receive, but rather the community of people that have lifted us up and continue to enrich us. Giving our people these gift baskets of homemade love is our small expression of gratitude we feel that we get to have them in our lives. It's not much, but it doesn't have to be. Christmas was never meant to max out credit cards, and it wasn't meant to obligate gift giving. It was meant to elicit the holy hush that comes with the stillness that cold brings. And year after year, it's meant to bring us back to our families and the traditions that curate laughter and love. There's promise in the air in our home right now. With Christmas and the new year just around the corner, we have a lot of planning to do. There's some things that never change, like laundry taken all day in the winter sun to dry. But I'm thankful, for the most part, that nothing ever stays the same. 2024 is bound to be a year of expansive love for us. And of all the gifts I've received this year, I'm not sure if the one that grows in my belly can be topped. I'm learning that fear of death only cultivates resistance towards rebirth. And in times when I'm filled with fear of the future, I am grounded in knowing that the mother will always hold me in her immeasurable love and wisdom. Like the land, the maiden in me must die in order for a mother to be born. The maiden will be burned to be transformed into something that I've never known. Another life awaits me on the other side of maidenhood, and the thought of being able to feel love so powerfully frightens me to my core. Life is strange but always pure. And the more I turn to the Father with my uncertainty, I am reminded that the challenges I've endured were placed there to mold me into the woman in His image. And when I take the time to honor the mother in this season as well, I can feel her spirit alive in me. Look good? Oh yes. Pretty good? Mm -hmm bringing an evergreen into our home at Christmas is our profound way of honoring the mother. When everything is bleak and dark outside, we are reminded in our home and hearts that the mother is very much alive. And we will hear her song of life again in the spring. But for now, she must rest, and so will we. Happy Yule and Merry Christmas to all of our viewers. Your encouragement this year has helped me grow as an artist, and I am forever grateful for the YouTube family that has been established here. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you later.